Your offer is tempting. I'll admit it. But what am I supposed to do? Just forget about everything that's happened? Forget about the fact that you just tried to keep me and my family prisoner here in Harmony? Ethan, if the prize is worth it, any man will swallow his pride. Now, your plans to redevelop the slums of Harmony, that's just the beginning. All your hopes and all your dreams can be turned into steel and concrete if you just say the word. This office could be the heart of a vast corporate machine whose only product is good. Yeah, an office that just happens to be right next to yours. Well, it has to be next to mine if you're my co-CEO. I mean, when Alistair taped the codicil to his will, he gave me all the power. But you, you have the experience. Now, surely I can't proceed without your advice, without your know-how. Oh, Teresa, you seem quite capable to make big decisions on your own, you know? Ethan, please, don't you want to make a positive difference in people's lives? Don't let a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity slip away. Stay here in harmony and take your rightful place as head. Well, uh, co-head, right? Yeah, co-head of Crane Industries. Ethan, what a team we'll make. I mean, with you by my side, Crane Industries, it can be an instrument to bring light into dark places. Ethan, let's build a brighter future. You and me, together. Hi, Bear. I got your message. What happened to Fancy? Oh, Julian. Julian was awful. She was at some diner with Noah, and a car slammed through the window and hit them. Someone tried to kill them. The driver was disguised and fled the scene. But why? No one knows. Well, how badly were they injured? Noah's fine. Just some cuts and bruises, but uh, Fancy. She's not in danger of dying or anything like that, but her face. It's her eye, and. Apparently, there was some glass embedded in it, and Eve's doing some tests. She could lose it. Oh, not my beautiful girl, not fancy. Eve, would you give me some good news? Tell me. Tell me fancy's eye can be saved. Noah, why is she here? Oh, mm -hmm. I remember. When we were talking, you were going to tell me your secrets. Everything there is to know about your past with Maya. No, no way. You can't. It's impossible. Look, you don't have to worry about that stuff now. Yes, I do. Tell me, Noah, why is your ex-girlfriend here? She was worried. <laughs> yeah, about me or about you? I was worried about both of you. Noah, what else do you know about the accident? Why did that car drive into the diner? Hey, look, there's no need to think about that now. We'll have plenty of time to talk about it later. Uh, okay, I need your rest. Oh, I need to know. Please tell me, Noah. I gotta know everything. Chris, you don't know what you're saying. Don't I? I've been dreaming about this moment for months now. It's not exactly how I had planned my proposal, but I can't have you thinking that I conspired behind your back to complete one of your father's sick plans. It kills me to think that you don't trust me, Sheridan. I would never do anything to hurt you. All I want from you is your love until the day I die. And this is why I was sneaking around behind your back. I went and chose an engagement ring for you. I don't know what to say. I do. I can talk for hours. I love you, Sheridan. You're so easy to love. I've never met another woman with a soul so pure and a heart so big. We've both been hurt. We've both lost so much. And yet we must have done something to please God because he's given us another chance at happiness. Marry me, Sheridan. Say yes. Will you be my wife?
Do you need some more time to let this sink in? Maybe this will make it seem more real. My apologies. I thought that our journey led to the same destination. But I see now that I was wrong. It was presumptuous of me to think that this would work. I didn't mean to put you on the spot like this. I'm sorry if my love for you is so unwelcome. You're helpless. Unable to move, unable to speak. Unable to spread your evil and destroy lives just for your pleasure. Where are your guards now, Alistair? No one cares enough about you to post them? Even though someone tried to kill you? You're utterly hopeless. Anyone could walk right in here and kill you. And you couldn't lift a finger to stop them. Darling, what are the chances a fancy could lose her eye? Where's the eye surgeon? The eye surgeon is coming. We've taken some tests, but we don't have the results back yet. I need to know. It's very serious. But I'm not in any position to make predictions, so you're going to have to be very patient. When the results come back, I will review them, and then I'll have a much better idea of Fancy's condition. Oh my God, how could this have happened? I need to know the truth, Noah. You have to finish telling me about you and Maya, about your secrets. Fancy, hey, look. You're too weak, okay? You need your rest. We can talk about this later. No. Now. I want to know now. Oh my God. You're such a mess. Thank God she went to sleep. She saved you from making a huge mistake. If you tell Fancy anything about that night, you're going to be putting her in even more jeopardy. You've got to keep your mouth shut. Is that clear? Say yes. Oh. <sighs> Teresa, your offer is tempting. I'll give you that. Well, it's no less than you deserve. I remember your mom used to say that you could be president one day. <laughs> this is better than that. You can wield real power without having to answer to anyone. Except you. You wouldn't have to answer to me. This would be like a partnership in every sense of the word. Think, Ethan, a position of real power, the chance to make a difference, the chance to reverse decades of crane corruption and evil. This is everything that you've ever wanted. Don't let it slip away. Just say yes. One word. Yes. Fancy was conscious, but she's asleep again now. Well, how was she? Could she speak? Yeah, she was, uh... Well, she was very confused, and she was pretty weak, but she was talking. You know, she wanted to know uh, where she was and what had happened. Well, I'm... I'm glad she's unconscious, because maybe Eve will have some good news when the test results come back. I certainly hope so. Fancy's so young, and she's so beautiful. If she loses her eye, it will destroy her. Well, maybe... Maybe our daughter will surprise us. Maybe she's stronger than we think. Let's hope. What have I done to Fancy? The 
this is all my fault. You want to tell me what you meant by that? I know. What's really going on here? No. No, 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 no. Teresa, I reject your offer. I'm sorry. No, you can't. I just did. No, Ethan, th this isn't about you and me. This is about making a difference. This is about making your visions of a better life for hundreds of thousands of people a reality. I mean, you're the one who told me that the way to happiness is to give of yourself. And don't you see, if you take this job, you'll be able to give of yourself every day? This is a pathway to a life of fulfillment and success and love. Love? Yes, this is everything that you have ever wanted. Ethan, your bones are crying out for you to accept this job. Now, come on. Over here, look. Right here. You see this? You see that this is yeah. exactly where it is supposed to be. See this? You have to touch this. I mean, it is real. The power that you have dreamed of your entire life is no longer a dream. From now on, just one phone call from Ethan Winthrop can change the world. I'm not gonna lie to you. Your offer's tempting. No, it's not tempting. It's downright damn entrancing for me. This is all I've ever dreamed of. I'll admit it. So, which tempts you more? The idea of making a difference? Or the idea of being with me? I'm very sorry to have caused your distress, Sheridan. I guess I was reading too much into your behavior with me. I just thought that we wanted the same things. But I get it now. You don't want to marry me. Maybe I should get my own room. Chris, wait. It's not you. It's the question. What, what does that mean? The question terrifies me. Try asking it. Please. I can't answer that question, just not yet. Why not? <sighs> Look, my life has been a series of disappointments. Every time I think I'm about to find some degree of happiness, it's just snatched away from me. And I can't bear to set myself up for that kind of disappointment again. I never disappoint you, Sheridan. Maybe not on purpose. Not ever. Don't make promises you can't keep. I, I don't understand this. You've opened yourself up to love before. What you had with Luis. He didn't disappoint you, did he? He died, didn't he? Look, Luis was the one bright spot in my life that I had after a long, long list of bad relationships. I'm not surprised. With my father, I was just a little girl when he sent me to Europe. I spent years going from boarding schools to hospitals to clinics, years of drugs and, and hypnosis and doctors, all because he wanted to quash old memories in my head. My only real friend was Pilar. I'd only see her once in a blue moon. And I was famous. Known all over as Sheridan Crane, the luckiest girl in the world. Do you know what it's like to see yourself growing up on the cover of magazines? I didn't even know that smiling Sheridan. She was just some imaginary princess. I would fantasize about her. Princess Sheridan had millions of friends. Princess Sheridan was happy and had wonderful parents that loved her and lots of brothers and sisters. And best of all, 
Princess Sheridan would grow up to find love and have a happy family of her own. You do. You have me and James and Marty when we find him. Do you understand why your question scares me so much? Every time I thought I would find someone who loved me, I would come to find out that they were only interested in my money or the power of my family, or they just dump me and run. At New Year's, I found out that my father paid men to leave me. I don't care about your money or your family. Your father is in a hospital, unconscious. He can only hurt us if you let him. But the scars are still there. It's just going to take time for me to heal before I can move on. Noah, I've been a cop my whole life, and I know something else is going on here. First, Maya's attacked on the wharf. It was a mugging. So you say. Two assailants and that degree of violence, and they didn't even take your purse? Now, the two of you know something, OK? And I want to know. Dad, I promise, I do not know what's going on. I hope you're leveling with me. Trying to hide the truth will only make things worse. Trust me. Yeah, I know. Look, but before I drag anyone into this, So you I... do know? No, I mean, I mean, I want to find out. Didn't you learn anything when those mobsters from Vegas came after you? Now, you may think that you can handle this, but you can't. First, Maya's attacked on the wharf and the car comes through the window at the diner. Trust me, it'll try to hurt you again. I don't want to get a call at 2 in the morning and tell me to come down to the morgue to try to identify your body. I just need some time, Dad. Time to figure out what's going on. Don't wait too long, okay? There's a lot of secrets in this town, okay? Dangerous secrets. You're not so scary now, old oh man. You can't do a thing. You can't even pick up a phone and have someone else do your dirty work. You're weak. You're nothing. And you can't hurt me. Not ever again. Tonight, I'm going to reveal that little secret to Eve. You know that little secret you kept from her, and you caused her all that pain and suffering. And once she hears about that, she's going to feel relieved and happy. You're bluffing. No, I'm not. You won't have any uh, chance to hurt her again. You're going to be ruined. In fact, you're going to be dead in the water. Not if I make sure you're dead first. Dead first. Ethan, this is what you want. This is your chance to have it all. You are in love with me. Stop, don't. We've been through this so many times. And we never resolve it. I resolved it a long time ago. A long time ago. I'm married to Gwen. I took marriage vows with Gwen, Teresa. No, well, vows based on lies aren't vows at all. Ethan, Gwen lied to you. She sold you out to the tabloids and blamed me for it and stopped us from getting married. Now, you never would have been thrown out of the Crane family if it weren't for Gwen. She robbed you of your birthright. Teresa, you, don't. You were heir to everything that Alistair possessed. Now, all I am trying to do is give back what was rightfully yours, what you dreamed of, including me. How? How? How do we go back? Well, it is what you want, right? Ethan, 
You were robbed of the life that you deserved. Now, this isn't just about the job. This is about love. It's Valentine's Day. So let me get back to you. Please. I can go through it again. Opening up my heart only means that I'll be hurt again. And yet it's the same heart that leads you to hope that love is just around the corner. And why else would you travel thousands of miles in search of Marty? My mistake was in rushing things. It was too soon, but I thought that if you knew how much I loved you, it would help ease the pain while we search for him. You can still have it all, Sheridan. And I'm here for you no matter what. And someday I hope your fantasy does come true. With me. A and we'll have James and Marty. And God knows who else. A real family. But I won't rush you. Thank you. And my office still stands. Take as much time as you need. I just hope someday that you will accept my hand. I love you, Sheridan. Today, tomorrow, always. You can wipe the mistakes of the past clean. Don't let Gwen stand in your way. Gwen is no mistake. Gwen is my wife. Mm -hmm. I made a commitment to her before God, oh, Teresa. False. Wait, let me, let me talk. I know you think those vows don't count because you've gone on and on about this nonsense that Gwen was the one that sold me out to it's the tablet. It's not nonsense. There is no proof whatsoever. I know there is all I know, nowhere. look, all I know is I made marriage vows and I have to stick with them, period. Have to? Well, that's not a way to talk about marriage now, is it, Ethan? It's how you talk about a prison sentence. If you loved Gwen the way that you love me, you would want to be married to her. And every time you left the house in the morning, you would be impatient to get back to her. So you marry somebody because love pulls you together. A magical force that makes you feel like your heart is incomplete without the others. But you have to stay married to Gwen? Is that how you want to spend the rest of your life? Chained to Gwen? when your heart belongs to me. She's still out. Good. We need to talk this through. There's nothing to talk about, Maya. Then don't listen to me. Listen to your father. What we know is dangerous. Anyone that we tell it to is going to be in danger, too. Be it Fancy or your father. Maya, you do not know what I have been through with Fancy, okay? I almost lost her once because I lied to her. I can't let that happen again. Even to save her life? Look at her, Noah. She's in that bed because of what happened that night in the attic. That car was meant to kill you. You know it. And I know it. And telling her the truth is like painting a target on her back. If she doesn't have one already. Look, we're already past that, okay? We're in danger and this accident just proves that. Look, we should have gone to the police back when we saw that guy killed in the attic. We both decided not to. As I recall, I needed a little convincing. But it was a mistake. And we're just paying for it now. It was a decision we have to live with. Or die. Don't say that. Maya, okay. My dad is right, okay? Whoever's doing this is not gonna stop. I have to come clean with him and with Fancy. I've made my decision. I hope you change your mind. For all of our sakes.
So is that your idea of nobility? Staying in a cold and loveless marriage simply because you took vows? It's not like that. Oh, it's I... exactly like that. You are in love with me. I am the woman who is in your heart and in your mind and in your soul. I love Gwen. Right. You know, Ethan, maybe you... You love the idea of Gwen. The face that she's allowed you to see. But let me tell you, she is malicious. She is conniving. I would not talk about conniving if I were you. OK. Yes, I've done many things that I am not proud of. But let me tell you, I've done them all for you and for my children. Ethan, don't you see our love? It's, it's different. It's special. It's the kind of love that they write about in great novels and in poetry. It's passionate. It's fiery. It's all-consuming, and you, you can't tell me that you don't feel that. Yes, I feel it. Feel it? Feel it everywhere. I feel it in every fiber of my being. I feel it all the time. And if I could take you in my arms, and I could lay you down and make love to you 24-7 for the rest of my life, I would do it. Well, then let's do because it. Because I can't. I can't. I can't look at myself in the mirror. Afterward, I'm married. I made promises. I made commitments. What kind of man would I be if I broke every one of those commitments and promises? Teresa, I can't just throw it all away. Well, you're locking yourself in a prison with Gwen. And you are going to live year after year in that same cold cell with her without love. We have love. What you have with Gwen is like a candle compared to the bonfire that you could have with me. Don't you see by sticking with Gwen, you are sentencing me to jail as well? And my cell is lonelier. See, Ethan, I made a promise to you as well, a vow. In my heart, I am married to you. And I can't just walk away from that. So, if I can't be with you, I can't be with anyone else, ever. But the girl who was, was with Noah, what happened to her? She was attacked on the wharf. I'm afraid if it wasn't for Noah and Fancy, she'd be dead right now. Do you think that has anything to do with the car trying to kill Fancy? Look, I don't have enough information to answer that. Sam, that's my daughter in there. She could have died. But Noah could have died, too. OK, so we have two more instances of violence. Do you think that they could be related to the attempts on Alistair's life, or even the attempt on Julian's life at the cannery? Maybe. I don't know. They seem pretty different to me. Whoever went after Alistair displayed real cunning, whereas tonight was brute violence, pure and simple. But why would anyone go after Fancy? Julian. I think that uh, Fancy was an innocent bystander. I'm worried that it has more to do with Noah and Maya. Why, Sam? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Whoever went after you and your father seemed to be focused on the two of you, especially Alistair. They didn't seem to go after any other family members, even though they had ample opportunity. That's another reason why I don't think Fancy was a, was a target tonight. Yes, but we don't know that for sure. And whoever tried to kill me, tried to kill my father, could still be out there. Yeah. And unfortunately, we have no idea who that is. Don't you walk away from me. I'll kill you, I swear I will. <laughs> so many people promised to kill me. Follow through on it. You don't get so tedious for me. <laughs> you can't tell what you know. Haven't you done enough to me already, Alistair? I've already made up my mind, Liz. And once I'm finished with you, this whole town is going to know you for exactly what you are. And guess what? You know, that sister you hate so much. 
Now she's gonna come through this whole thing looking like an angel compared to you. In fact, Eve might even get real happiness. And you will get exactly what you deserve. And then some. Hmm. <laughs> That's a damn good year. <laughs> oh, gee. Oh, easy. Easy, girl. Easy. You're wrong. You sick, twisted, vicious excuse of a man. You're the one who's going to get what they deserve. And after all this time, I will have my revenge. I'll save this for another day. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Don't worry about it, Sheridan. Although you did put a bit of a crump in my grandiose plans for Valentine's Day. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot. I didn't. But all is not lost. We are still in one of the most romantic places in the whole world. What do you say we celebrate? Go to an outdoor restaurant for dinner, and then maybe a walk on the beach. They say islands are great for stargazing. That sounds lovely. Good. Then all we have to do is get changed and get out of here. Shall I go first? Of course. And I mean it, Sheridan. My offer still stands. And I reserve the right to make it again. Maybe someday soon. I do love him so much. Did I just make the biggest mistake of my life? So without you, I will go through life alone. Keeping the flame of my love for you alive in my heart. Is that what you want? I've never, ever wanted to hurt you. I hope you know that. It's just that it's time to give up wishing for what we can't have. Teresa, think of the pain you've caused. No. Teresa, look, for me, for me, please, it's time to move on. I mean, I know you can find love someplace else. You just have to give yourself a chance to find it. You may have just walked right past it at one point, but you were so involved in the idea of us, you missed it. I just can't leave Gwen. I can't. I won't. Not now. Not ever. Then don't. What? Don't leave Gwen. Spend the rest of your life with her if you want to. Okay, that's that's an about face. I believe you. I believe that you're not going to divorce her no matter how misguided your reasons. But that's no reason for either one of us to give up our dream Teresa, of happiness. I'm 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 sorry. I, I'm not following this at all. I'll be your mistress. We can build like this secret life together. And and you can you can stay married to Gwen. But at the same time, you can have complete love with me. Fancy. You don't deserve this. tell you how sorry I am. I feel that this is all my fault. I love you, Fancy. I hope you can hear that in your dreams. When you wake up, I will tell you everything. You deserve the truth. If you tell her, both you and Fancy are as good as dead. There's something that puzzles me. Now, if the same person who tried to kill Alistair tried to kill Julian, why hasn't he tried to kill Julian again? I don't know. I'd like to think it was because I've changed, but I might be kidding myself. A person could be 
waiting in the parking lot as we speak. Let's assume the same person who attacked Alistair also shot you. Well, who hated both of you enough to want you both dead? You threatened me. You laughed at me. With a laugh, it's on you, you despicable old goat. Tonight, I get my revenge. No one deserves to die as much as you, Alistair. Oh, you have no idea how I have longed for this moment. I'm gonna savor your death the way you savor a fine wine. Slowly. Letting each moment warm me. It's Valentine's Day. Whole world is out there giving one another hearts. The only heart I want is yours, Alistair. And if I could rip it from your chest, I would. Bless. All I can do is stop it. Bon voyage, Alistair. You're on a midnight train to hell. <laughs> Watch the great Alistair Crane die. Are you ready for this great surprise? Yeah. Oh, I can't watch. One little word.